everyone, I'm Karen, and if you're new here, this is my very niche YouTube channel where I talk about nothing but jigsaw puzzles. I have lots of reviews of different brands and tips for how to do puzzles more efficiently, and today what I want to talk about are some tips for how to do jigsaw puzzles in a small space. So maybe a small apartment or just your bedroom or a dorm room. But before I get into it, if you didn't know, I also make DIY videos over on HGTV Handmade, and I have a video up right now about storage hacks for living in a small space. And one of my tips is all about how to store your jigsaw puzzles more efficiently in a really small space. So I'm gonna link that video right down below if you wanna know the secret. But first, my number one tip is to keep two things in mind before you even buy the puzzle in the first place. Number one, the size of the puzzle box, and number two, the size of the finished puzzle. Puzzle boxes are not always the smallest things, and when you have a bunch of them, they take up a lot of space. So if you don't have a ton of space, getting 10 puzzles that are about this size would take up way less space than getting 10 Ravensburger puzzles, for example. And I love Ravensburger, I'm just saying, they have very big boxes. You might also want to just pick a brand and only get puzzles from that one brand for now, since all of the boxes will be a standard size and they'll all fit a lot more nicely onto a shelf or a storage area, rather than having a ton of different brands where the boxes are kind of all over the place. And then, of course, be mindful of the size of the finished puzzle before you take over your entire dining room table for a week. Most puzzle boxes and online orders will tell you somewhere what the finished dimensions of the puzzle are going to be. So you can keep in mind how much space you actually have to dedicate to putting this thing together and whether it's actually going to fit in the space that you have available. Now, I know that I've talked about this a million times on this channel before, but just in case you're new here, I love to do my puzzles on a sheet of foam core for two reasons. Well, three. Number one, it's really cheap, really easy to get your hands on. Number two, you can pick up the entire thing and move it around so you're not monopolizing one single space for the entire duration of the puzzle. And number three, it creates a stiff enough surface that if you put it on a smaller table, you have extended the area that you have available to do the puzzle. So this is really handy if all that you have available is a coffee table or a side table that would otherwise be too small for most of your puzzles. Also, you can even just hold it in your lap if you're on a couch or in bed if you really don't have any other flat surfaces that you can do the puzzle on. Some people really like roll-up puzzle mats and those might work better if you have pets or kids since it kind of hides the entire thing away from them but I personally haven't used them, so I can't comment on like which one is the best brand or anything. Okay, so maybe you're doing your puzzle, but the table where you're doing it is only just big enough for the puzzle without any extra space to spread out the pieces. Well, if you have an entire section finished, you might just wanna have scrap paper or poster board on hand so that you can cover up that finished section and spread out the pieces. And doing this on you know, a white piece of paper, it becomes way easier to see the pieces than if you had put them directly onto the puzzle. You can also look around your house and see what you have available to sort the pieces onto. You can buy stackable puzzle trays, but I tend to prefer a more neutral background than the really bright colors that a lot of them come in. So I personally tend to use the tops of other puzzle boxes, but you could also use baking trays or any other 
tray with um, an edge on it so that the pieces don't just fall off, anything like that that you have lying around. So if you really don't have any space to do a whole puzzle all together, it can actually be a fun extra challenge to do the puzzle in multiple sections by breaking up the edge onto smaller pieces of foam core or cardboard or any other stiff surface. And then you can kind of stack them on top of each other and it sort of breaks up the puzzle into multiple different smaller puzzles. This could even just be a fun extra challenge for a puzzle that would otherwise be too easy for you since you're basically turning one puzzle into multiple smaller puzzles. So another thing to keep in mind is how difficult the puzzle is and how much time you're actually going to need the space to finish the puzzle. I'm planning an entire video about the elements that would make a puzzle easy or hard or time consuming or quick to do, but I mean if you've been doing puzzles for a while you probably have a sense of about how long a puzzle's gonna take you going into it. So if you can only use your dining room table, I don't know, at night when your kids are asleep, Maybe for now you stick to smaller, easier puzzles that you can get done in an hour or two rather than giant ones that would go on for weeks at a time. So that way you can have the whole puzzle cleaned up by the time that space needs to be available for other uses. I also just wanna mention a little fact about giant puzzles, which I talked about in my video all about how to do giant puzzles. Basically, when you get to puzzles that are about 6,000 pieces or more, that's when the manufacturers will start to break up the puzzle into different sections, and each section comes in a separate bag. So for this 40,000 piece puzzle, which is a huge undertaking, you don't actually need 22 feet of free space the entire time that you're working on it. The puzzle comes in 10 sections of 4,000 pieces each. So you only need about four and a half feet by three feet to put together each section, which I mean, it's still a lot of space to have available for the amount of time it'll take to complete all 10 sections, but it's not as crazy as having 22 feet of free space, which, I mean, I don't know how anyone can afford that much house, that much free space living in LA. That's too expensive for me. <laughs> so anyway, for normal sized puzzles, you might also want to do some Googling and see if there are any puzzle swap groups near you, or sometimes libraries will have a puzzle swap section. That way you can consistently be bringing in new puzzles without all of your older puzzles, especially the ones that you didn't like as much, just taking up all of your storage space. And who knows, you might make some new puzzling friends out of it. For me personally, um, I don't actually do any kind of swap groups, but I do have a friend who's a teacher who every time my puzzles exceed the shelf that I've set up to hold my puzzles, I make myself go through, get rid of the ones that I don't like as much or that I don't think I'm gonna return to, and I give them to her to have the kids do. Now that I just got all of those new Eboo puzzles, I feel like I'm kind of running out of space and I don't know which ones to get rid of. So this plan might not work long term, but it's been working so far for now. And you know, another tip is that you might wanna just give yourself a set amount of storage space and say, when this fills up, it's time to get rid of some. And by get rid of, I mean give to somebody who's gonna do them, not throw them out. Okay, you guys get it. Okay, and finally, this is related to the hack that I shared in the handmade video. But when it comes to storing your puzzles, some puzzle boxes are definitely a little bit larger than they necessarily have to be. So what you can do is you can keep the box intact for the puzzle that you like the most, but then use Ziploc bags to put all of the pieces into a bag, and then you can store multiple puzzles in the same box. Just cut out the picture from one box and place it inside with the pieces, and now you have cut your storage space for these puzzles in half. So I hope these tips were helpful if you're going to be doing puzzles in a dorm room 
or a small apartment or a space that you share with other people. I'd love to know in a comment right down below if you have any other tips for doing puzzles in small spaces. Don't forget to check out my handmade video for even more tips and DIYs for storing other kinds of things in a small apartment. And your code word, if you've watched all the way to the end of the video, is going to be the phrase puzzle boxes, okay? So if you use that somewhere in your comment, I'll know that you watched the whole video and that you are my favorite puzzler which is a very prestigious title to have, I'm just saying. All right, I've gotta go. I'll talk to you guys later.